Kevin Harvick grabs his second win of 2020, winning at Atlanta, a racetrack he basically kind of owns, I think. But uh, yeah, every time he wins at Atlanta, his first career win was back in 2001, uh, the first win for RCR after Dale Earnhardt's death in that car. Uh, held the three out the window, did it in 2018 when he got his second career win there, and then did it again this year. Uh, just did a, a victory lap and did not do any burnouts or anything. Uh, even though there were no fans there, he still did the three thing. So uh, honoring Dale Earnhardt Sr. and just really cool moment uh, to honor him. And also Rodney Childers' birthday, the crew chief for Kevin Harvick. He was, it was his birthday today, so he got a win. But uh, yeah, I missed probably the first 130 laps in the last 200-ish. You guys know me. I like to try to stay optimistic, positive, but oh. Woo! Uh, that was, um, this one's going to tank in Jeff Gluck's pole, I think. This was like the 600. Uh, it was not the greatest racing. Um, I'm really looking forward to Martinsville, but today was rough. Racing was rough. There's no other way to put it. That was not a pretty race. Um, Kevin Harvick gets the win. I mean, the, you're looking at the numbers. I didn't memorize them, but... He's had a lot of laps here at Atlanta the past few years, dominated. Um, he just knows how to get the place. He knows how to get around the place. There's no question about it. Uh, they call it Harvicking for a reason when he hooks that bottom line. But, man, um, it got interesting at the end a bit when there was the threat of a tire mileage race. There were guys, like, losing their tires. And, you know, it could have made things interesting, but it was only, like, four people, and they weren't really contending. So, yeah, that was kind of irrelevant. And then the front row cars really tried to make it interesting. They spun out at the end of the stages, made the stage endings kind of interesting. Just not much happened today. I mean, it was better than – it was probably um, – I don't remember, you know. I don't know if it was better than 600, but uh, yeah, I, I've i never been on the side of shortening these races, but man, after this one, especially they keep this package. They need get, they got short some of these races. I think I'll make a video about this in the future, but you got to make some of these races shorter. Some of these mile and a half, two mile tracks and stuff. Like I think the crown jewels like the Daytona 500, the Southern 500, Coke 600, Brickyard 400, whatever... You keep those the same length, and I think you keep Martinsville and Bristol the same. I think those are fine, and heck, maybe even Talladega and the other Daytona race. You keep those the same. Those are fine as is. But some of these mile and a half races, man, they go on way too long, and they they just aren't good. They just aren't good. Uh, this one, I don't know if it was the I don't know if it was the package or what, but this race just it just sucked. There's no other way to say it. It was not a good race. Um, I hate. I really do hate being the guy who's negative and stuff, but they got to do something different. Uh, I think sh we saw some of those shorter races. Uh, we saw the shorter Darlington race. We saw the shorter Charlotte race. And the shorter Charlotte race, while it wasn't like the greatest thing ever, it was better than the 600. It was more intense. Uh, you felt the intensity throughout the race the whole time. Because it was such a short race, every lap was important in a sense. You get my point. Whereas this, it was like... If you messed up on lap 120, it wouldn't affect you. You could come back from something. But let's say at that Charlotte race, you mess up on lap 120, it could screw up your day. Like, I think some of these shorter races, like a 300-mile race or like a 500-kilometer race, I think those would be good for some of these mile-and-a-half tracks that just need shorter races, some, like Atlanta, like Texas, um... Like, some of these 400-mile races that we see are much better than the 500-milers. Like, we see at Chicago. Like, we see at Kansas because they're shorter. They're a lot more intense. They they just got a lot more happening there. Now, that could just be because the tracks are better. We see a lot more better racing at Chicago and Kansas in recent years. Uh, whereas Atlanta has not prov provided as great of racing. Um, Atlanta is a fun track for the drivers, I understand. But... Uh, from a fan standpoint, has not been the greatest product over the past few years. Uh, Twenty, I, I tell you what, I became a fan in 2010. First Atlanta race I remember was 2011. Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson battling out for the win. 
Boy, that was a fun one. 2012, uh, that was a fun one too. I think Hamlin and Gordon battled it out for the win. 2013, uh, Kyle Busch won. I don't remember what happened that one. 2014 was a really fun one. You had Casey Kane and Matt Kenseth. And um, then 2015, 2016, Jimmy won. I think one of those had a really interesting finish. But, man, um, I want to say it's this package, man. We got to get some more horsepower back in this thing. We need, like, we need something. I don't know. I'm not an expert. I'm I'm not an expert on all that stuff, but I I can share my opinion, which I'm doing right now. I'm ra rambling on right now. Um, you put more horsepower, you take out some downforce. Uh, you make it more driver skill than just a car. I think it makes it more interesting. It gives the drivers a little bit more opportunity to showcase their talent, first of all, and actually make some more aggressive moves, some more uh, decisive. It provides more opportunities for mistake, which makes it, entertaining and stuff but yeah that was just um it was not the greatest race let's go to the results results um Kevin Harvick won his second one in the season good for him second Kyle Busch JGR actually had a really good day three cars in the top five they had a good chunk of laps swept the stages with Truex so yeah they had a good day they'd had a rough start to the year but they They've got a couple wins, yeah, with Hamlin at Darlington and Daytona, but they hadn't been leading a ton of laps. They hadn't been winning stages, but Truex swept the stages, led a lot of laps. Kyle Busch was up there most of the day. Denny Hamlin ended up getting up there, so not a bad day for JGR and Toyota. Third, Truex, we talked about him. He swept the stages, led a lot of laps, so he's got a couple playoff points under his belt now. Fourth, Ryan Blaney, good run for him. Um... Finally gets a top five, it feels like. It feels like every time he's in the top five, something goes wrong. But, you know, nothing went wrong this time. Fifth, Denny Hamlin. Good for him. Sixth, Kurt Busch. I tell you what. Kurt Busch, before the race even started, failed inspection three times. Had to do a pass-through penalty. Was a lap down. Comes back, gets a sixth-place finish. Not bad, Kurt Busch. Not bad. Seventh, Jimmy Johnson. Eighth, Chase Elliott. You know, the Hendrick cars, they did, they've been doing great so far this year. They were not that hot today uh, chase elliott led like the first 25 laps i think before the competition caution and then after that he was back half of the top 10 jimmy johnson was back half of the top 10 alex bowman was outside the top 10 william byron hit the wall early and he was like 30 something all day hendrick's been doing really good this year but they str I, I don't want to say struggled but compared to their earlier runs in the year they struggled a bit they were not up front leading a lot of laps winning stages in the top five multiple cars in the top five I didn't even get a car in the top five today. Um, but, yeah, that was very, very interesting uh, to see that JGR was, I don't want to say back because it's one race and Hendrick regressed because it's only one race. Uh, if this trend continues, then, yeah, we can say that, but it's only been one race. Calm down. Ninth, Brad Keselowski. Um, wow, Chase Elliott finished ahead of Brad Keselowski. Wow. Incredible. Tenth, Joey Logano. Joey Logano like, led really early. Just fell off a cliff for a bit, then uh, came back. Top ten, cool. Eleventh, Austin Dillon. Not a bad, not a bad day for him. He was the first car one lap down. Only ten cars finished on the lead lap. They talked about how this package was meant for um, more close racing. Hoy, <laughs> ten cars on the lead lap in like tenth place, being twenty five seconds back. Ho, oh. okay. 12th, Alex Bowman, 13th, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 14th, Ryan Newman, 15th, Matt Kenseth, 16th, Tyler Reddick, 17th, Eric Almirola. I don't know what happened to him. He was running really good at the beginning. He just fell off a cliff, I guess. 18th, Christopher Bell, 19th, Cole Custer, 20th, Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer has the crappiest luck. He once again led a bunch of laps today. was in the top five. Had a tire go down multiple times today. His right rear just got shredded. And he ended up having to pit with like five to go, finish his 20, 20th. 21st, Bubba Wallace. Um, after the race, he kind of passed out. And then they went to interview him and he passed out again. I really don't know why they went to him after he basically passed out. Um, so Fox, I, I really don't know why they interviewed him there. But I really hope he's okay. Uh, I'm looking for it right now on the Twitters to see if he is okay. Um, yep, 22nd. Chris Buescher, 23rd, 
John Hearn Nemechek. He tried to make 23rd and 24th, John Hearn Nemechek and Michael McDowell. They tried to make this race interesting at the end of stages one and two by spinning out. They didn't spin out intentionally, but, you know, they spun out. But, uh, okay. 25th, Matt Benedetto. He was in the top 10. He had a tire go down at the end. 26th, Ryan Priest. He had a tire go down at the end. 27th, Corey LaJoy. 28th, Eric Jones. Eric Jones, he had a tire go down, not from where he made contact with Christopher Bell, and he had to pit at the end of stage two illegally, so he was, like, penalized, obviously, at the start of stage three. Was a lap down. Right when he got his lap back, he had a loose wheel and had to pit or got a penalty or something. 29th, Ty Dillon. 30th, Brendan Poole. 31st, Daniel Suarez. 32nd, Quinn Half. Go Starcom. 33rd, William Byron. He hit the wall. I don't know if he cut a tire or if he just got loose and hit the wall, but he hit the wall. Yeah. 24th, Josh Balicki, or 34th, my bad. 35th, Garrett Smithley. 36th, J.J. Yaley. 37th, Reed Sorensen. 38th, Joey Gase. 39th, Timmy Hill. 40th, B.J. McLeod. Oh, B.J. Oh, my. B.J. had a rough day, to say the least. Um, but, yeah, that's your race today. Thanks for watching. Um... <sighs> get more horsepower in these cars, please. I can't wait for Martinsville. Martinsville is going to be a fun one on Wednesday night, unless the weather hits and it looks like the weather's going to hit. I I don't I don't need I don't. Ugh.